In our investigation of common vector spaces, we know that the set of 2 by 2 matrices, or really, in the, a more general sense, the set of all m by n matrices, forms the vector space using standard vector operations. I'm interested in investigating some non-standard operations. So, we'll still stick with the collection of 2 by 2 matrices, but this time when I refer to vector addition, what I'm actually going to be referring to is matrix multiplication. So vector A plus vector B is actually going to be matrix A times matrix B. Scale and multiplication is actually going to be raising a matrix to a power. That is to say, if I multiply vector A by scalar C, what I'm really doing is multiplying matrix A by itself a total of C times. So my question is, which axioms will still hold? <clears throat> a lot of this is going to be very highly interpretive of the link between what we refer to as vector addition and scalar multiplication and what we actually mean by those things. So first and foremost, axiom A1, closure under vector addition. So if I have two vectors that are in the set, I want to make sure that their sum is still in the set. We'll refer to the set as S for the time being. Now what this is really saying is if I take a 2 by 2 matrix A and I multiply it by a 2 by 2 matrix B, is this going to result in a 2 by 2 matrix? Well, if A is 2 by 2 and B is 2 by 2, these two numbers have to be the same, which is good. And these two numbers will be your result. So yes, indeed, uh, multiplying matrix A by matrix B is going to wind up giving you an element of our collection S. So that's vector addition over here, matrix multiplication here. So yes, a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by a 2 by 2 matrix does result in a 2 by 2 matrix. Next up, axiom A2 is that vector addition is commutative. So the question that we're posing here if I take vector A plus vector B, is that going to be the same as vector B plus vector A? Now to translate that into the given situation, what it's asking is, is matrix A times matrix B the same as matrix B times matrix A? Uh, well, this is simply not the case. Matrix multiplication is not necessarily commutative, so this one is going to be a no, this is not necessarily the case. As such, um, A2 fails. A3 poses the question, <clears throat> vector addition is associative. So if I have three vectors and I'm adding them together, the order in which I add them from left to right should not matter. Translating this in terms of the, uh, the given situation, our operation is actually matrix multiplication. So if I multiply A times B and multiply the result by C, is that the same as A times the result I get when I multiply B times C first? And the answer is yes, this is true. Matrix multiplication is associative. As far as A4 is concerned, is the uh, additive identity, so VA identity. So can we identify a matrix such that when I multiply it, or excuse me, when I uh, perform the act of vector addition with this that I wind up getting the same result? Now translating this to the appropriate situation, what we're really saying is A times what would result in just the exact same thing whatever this thing is, would be known as the zero vector. Now, when it comes to matrix multiplication, the only way that you can multiply by something and wind up with the exact same matrix is through the use of the identity matrix. So specifically the two by two identity matrix. So here our zero vector is actually the two by two identity matrix. Now that lends a, uh, a very interesting result to axiom A5 which is the existence of the additive inverse. <clears throat> now as far as an additive inverse is concerned, so 
of vector addition inverse states that for every matrix within the set, nope, for every vector within the set, there exists an additive inverse such that when you add them together, you wind up getting the zero vector. Now translating that to the appropriate situation, what we're saying is A multiplied by something should give us the two by two identity matrix. And the thing that would do so would be the matrix multiplicative inverse. However, it's not guaranteed that we are dealing with non-singular matrices. As such, it is not guaranteed that A inverse will exist for every single matrix within this set. So A inverse does not exist for all A in our set. Now if we had specified that we were dealing with non-singular matrices that might be a little bit different. For axiom A6 that is going to be closure under scalar multiplication. closure under scalar multiplication. So what we're saying is if I take C times A that that is still going to be an element of our set S. Now if I take a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 2 matrix times a whole bunch of 2 by 2 matrices times a 2 by 2 matrix the result will still be in S. Because if I take 2 by 2 times 2 by 2 times 2 by 2 we can multiply a 2 by 2 matrix by itself as many times as we want <clears throat> final result is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix every time. Axiom A7 scalar multiplication distributes over vector addition. That is to say if I take a scalar and I'm multiplying that by a sum of two vectors that is the same as saying take the scalar times the vector plus the scalar times the vector translating this into the actual uh, what we're intending here vector A plus vector B would be multiplying matrix A times matrix B multiplying by the scalar C would be raising that to a power on the right hand side we would be performing the scalar multiplications first and then the matri matrix multiplication or uh, vector addition second <clears throat> now one might say, well, absolutely, that is the way that this thing works. However, this one is actually going to fail because axiom A2 fails. So the reason that this one fails is that on the left-hand side, we have A times B times A times B times A times B times A times B over and over and over. Whereas on the right-hand side, we have A times A times A times A over and over times B times B times B times B over and over this would only be true if matrix multiplication were commutative. As a result, we are allowed to draw a conclusion about this one, and that is that no, this axiom does not hold. <clears throat> but if matrix multiplication were commutative, it would. Next up, axiom A8. Scalar multiplication distributes over scalar addition. So if I take C plus D, and I'm multiply that by vector A. That's supposed to be the same as scalar C times vector A plus scalar C times, or excuse me, scalar D times vector A. Now do keep in mind that on the right hand side this is vector addition. On the left hand side this is scalar addition. Now because it's scalar addition it does not fall into the same category as what we're doing with the, uh, the vector addition. Here, vector addition is going to be matrix multiplication. So this would actually be A raised to the C power multiplied by A raised to the D power. This property does hold. Both of these are communicating the same thing, which is that A is going to be multiplied by itself a total of C plus D times. Next up, associativity of scalar multiplication. So scalar multiplication is associative, normally starts with C times D times a vector is the same as C times D times a vector. 
Now on the left hand side what we have is scalar multiplication twice and on the right hand side what we have is scalar multiplication of a vector one single time. On the right hand side this is saying matrix A raised to the C times D power. Whereas on the left hand side what we have is matrix A raised to the D power that is in turn then raised to the C power. Thankfully, both of these mean exactly the same thing, which is that A is going to be multiplied by itself a total of C times D times. And finally, axiom A10 is the unit property. Is it true that multiplying the scalar 1 times vector A will give vector A? And according to the definition that we're using, translating to the appropriate situation, this would be matrix A raised to the first power, and that is going to be equal to matrix A. That is true. So overall, there were a total of three axioms that failed, and they were A2, the commutativity of vector addition, A5, the existence of the additive inverse, and A7, which was scalar multiplication distributes over vector addition. The other seven axioms all held.